Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And I'm already covering a couple of playlists uh, like full stack loan playlist for Udemy and uh, Airbnb. And apart from that, there is a fun playlist which talks about Nest.js microservice, beginner to advanced level. And in last couple of videos, we have already covered deploying Nest.js microservice as a Lambda. So I wanted to move ahead in the in this series and I wanted to add a couple of more videos. I mean 10 to 20 videos and those videos specifically target serverless with Nest.js. So what all we have done till now already. Uh, I mean this Nest.js advanced microservice uh, playlist talks about Nest.js being deployed to EC2 instance, to ECS, Kubernetes and now we are talking about uh, serverless environment. I mean, the serverless architecture and deploying Nest.js microservice as a Lambda. Till now, we have covered only, I think, the Lambda part and EC2 instance, Node ECS and the Kubernetes part. But now I want to move ahead with the serverless architecture first, and then we will talk about ECS, uh, where you can actually spin a container uh, for the Nest.js microservice, or you can also deploy that inside a pod of a Kubernetes container. Kubernetes pod is in itself a container. So the next series, next part is talking overall about serverless architecture. You might have already heard about the Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB. All these components work together and gives a serverless environment for your application deployment. Where your applications and microservices are deployed as a Lambda, you expose those Lambda interface, either a GraphQL or a RESTful interface through the API Gateway and all the asynchronous things which you are executing that will happen around event bridge, SNS, SQS and Dynamo stream, S3 events because Lambda, it's not always that, okay, you send a request and uh, there is always a reply back. Sometimes you need, you want some asynchronous processing, some kind of a cron job running in the background. Some, let's say simple use cases, when you upload a file, you want it to trim or you wanted to crop that in the background and you wanted to optimize the file. How you can do that? You can attach a Lambda and attach a trigger to S3 so that whenever you upload a file to S3 bucket, Lambda triggers and Lambda does all these things. And then maybe uh, this uh, API gateway exposes an API which renders that image on the UI. So overall, what all interface we are using? Lambda, API gateway, DynamoDB, S3, SNS, SQS, and RDS, right? RDS can be plugged in with the server or serverless all like you have Amazon and Aurora, DynamoDB, MongoDB, all these interfaces can be used with the serverless architecture. So my focus more on, let's say you are building a, any kind of a startup or any kind of a full stack clone. Uh, tomorrow you are, you are building a Twitter clone, right? So what if your services are deployed as a Lambda and you are using DynamoDB and your Lambda REST API interface through Nest.js microservices are exposed through API gateway and all the authentication authorizations and API and interface with the Dynamo DBs, all those things are there, right? So this is the, like the overall picture we have, right? So this is what I'm talking here. I mean, we have already talked about how to deploy a Nest.js service as a Lambda. Now we are going to move ahead in the direction. We are going to automate lots of things because in the last video, if you remember, we were able to deploy the, the Nest.js microservice through CI CD or through manually, but we were not using any automated script which bundles your code into build and node modules and deploy that code to the Lambda. We will still use AWS CDK stack that will help us to build a Lambda API gateway, DynamoDB tables and all. This is actually our infra part, which uh, through the cloud formation will create a Lambda, uh, all the AWS components for us. And your Nest.js microservice will be exposed through this proxy endpoint. I mean, we are going to use a proxy feature of API Gateway. So all the requests will be proxy to your Nest.js service. So you might have a 10 different APIs that will be handled through one single endpoint because internally Nest.js service will be doing the routing. And here, these are the important part, which we are going to talk in coming videos after we talk about, okay, how you can just uh, deploy a simple Hello World Nest.js service as a Lambda or AWS with the API Gateway. 
So API Gateway Lambda, we will talk about Event Bridge, SNS, SQS, uh, how we can do the asynchronous communication in this serverless architecture because serverless contains lots of components. Uh, a simple use case is let's say in serverless architecture, we, we without serverless we use this Kafka, Rabbit MQs and all. But with AWS, we can just use SNS SQS based on the, the feature, based on the demand. A simple example is, let's say you want to send uh, emails asynchronously. So what typical, what you will do? Either you send an email through the Lambda code, but you also want to track if the email has been sent successfully or not. So in that case, your Lambda, Lambda is a function that will push the event to SQS, right? And then there can be uh, another Lambda listening to the SQS, listening to the SQS and that will uh, let me move it to the top. That, that will be listening to the SQS queues and when the event comes, it will get the event and it will it will trigger the email. If the email is not sent, SQS will retain that message. So all these kind of asynchronous things which we want to achieve in our overall architecture that can be done with the SNS SQS event bridge. Let's say your multiple services are sending multiple events and you want some handler. So you can have a event bridge and you can also record those events. So it's like a same as sourcing. You should be able to track all the events through all the microservices in the event bridge through the DynamoDB table. Okay. So this is the trickiest part and that we are going to do. I am going to just use this simple demo example for now. Earlier I was using uh, a PNPM monorepo, sorry, NX monorepo with a PNPM workspace. I will just talk about standalone simple NestJS service, which has an infra part. In this infra, we have stacks already created. We are going to deploy a simple NestJS API stack as a Lambda. And this stack will have a API gateway and a Lambda. This is the Lambda function and this is the API gateway. So we are going to do all those things one by one. What I will do is I will show you the quick recap. Okay, what I'm going to cover and then we will talk about these things one by one. So here, what are the prerequisites before you start? Uh, I mean, I'm just using a standalone repository, which and I do have AWS account and on AWS account, you can create admin user through root user, which should have access key and secret key. You should, uh, you can obtain it. I have already shown that in the demo in the last video, but it's very easy. Create admin user. I mean, either you can create a sandbox admin, which already has the permissions of administration and you can just create a new user, add that user to that group and then download the access key and secret keys because through that user, we are going to access CDK. So what AWS CDK is? AWS CDK is nothing but an interface provided by AWS, just a SDK library through which we are writing TypeScript code and we are able to deploy the code to the Lambda and, uh, or any other uh, AWS components because that CDK indirectly creates a CloudFormation template and that is getting deployed. Because AWS understand CloudFormation. So what CDK does is when you do CDK deploy, CDK synth, it creates the CloudFormation template that we have already discussed. So that's a quick recap. It creates a CloudFormation template and it will pushes that to the uh, AWS. AWS understand CloudFormation, okay. I have one Lambda, I have one API gateway, and this is the code zip file I need to push to the Lambda. So it's easy for AWS to understand all those things. Okay. So prerequisite AWS account, access key and secret key. You, you just need to run AWS configure. It will ask you access key, secret key, uh, reason. We are using uh, US East one. Uh, I purchased the AWS account with, I'm paying just a minimum bill but for these demos, that's more than enough. And then we are going to run CDK deploy, NPX CDK deploy and your stack name. Stack name is like a nest CPI. Stack name is defined uh, in your code. So this is a simple code. And if you look into the code, it's nothing but a simple uh, nest just app. Okay. What I have added is just a infra folder. Infra folder, I have already talked about this. This is just a CDK part. And in this CDK, I mean, you can just do CDK in it. It will create this infra folder. And I'm not repeating those steps because that is already covered. Or you can just take a look onto this baseline example. It, we are using AWS CDK, AWS CDK lib because that is the, you can say SDK that is providing us a TypeScript interface to 
create lambda create api gateway create dynamo db tables and everything so this is my stack which i want to deploy a stack is nothing but it is taking only lambda lambda and api gateway right and to create a lambda what all things you need function name what is where is your zip file okay and what is your function handler because lambda is a function you need to define who is the handler in which particular file and your node.js runtime memory size and moment variables which you want to populate later you will use a dynamo or rds you need to provide a database credentials either through a secret variables or through environment variables and some policies that that what permissions this lambda has okay i can read and write to the event bridge i can push the event to this sns queues i should be able to write to the dynamo db tables all those are lambda permissions because lambda cannot do anything until unless you assign a permission lambda cannot read file from s3 until unless you assign a policy because in on aws everything works on these policy statements so automatically it will assign a policy that you can access any sns queue or in this account and which account we are talking i have already specified the account this is the cdk environment okay this is the region and this account id you will be passing at runtime okay this is my stack name new nest api stack and this stack contains nothing but lambda and api gateway i can attach cdk dot api gateway who is the handler of the api gateway so whenever the request comes where that request is going request will go to this lambda and it is proxying all the requests so whatever the endpoint you hit on the api gateway all the requests will be proxied to this lambda now lambda has this internal routing let's say okay this is your api gateway environment and endpoint endpoint okay when you are hitting api v1 user or you might also hit api v1 account so whatever is coming about uh, after this endpoint all this will be proxy to the lambda now lambda will decide okay api v1 user call this controller service in the nest js api v1 account call this controller and service in the nest js and stage name because stage name is important when you deploy the lambda you can have actually three different instance of this lambda based on your stage sometimes you isolate the api gateway itself so this will work only for the development but otherwise at run time you can pass this stage variable stage is coming from props and here we are passing the stage environment stage is nothing but coming from process.env.stage so we are before even running we are uh, specifying all these environment variables like this stage equal to development right and uh, this environment variable support account id equal to something so all these environment variables you are setting an aws profile using aws configure that you will pass your aws profile and then you can just do is cdk deploy but for cdk deploy that is fine okay you can specify cdk deploy okay this is my infra folder where you need to run the cdk deploy command but to deploy this i need a lambda as a zip file i need a build folder node modules and all the required artifacts so what we do is we are creating a zip file this zip file because at this zip file you can create through script uh, basic steps is to just create a folder and keep copying all your artifacts the build in node modules and then zip it that we will do through script and now this zip file path you need to pass in the lambda you can see here i am passing project name dot zip and the lambda handler is build lambda dot handler if you see the path this we have already discussed okay how we are creating a lambda because we are using aws serverless uh, aws serverless express to convert an nest js app into lambda so this is really very interesting this is how we create a simple nest js service into uh, aws lambda and this is a simple example i copied from the aws serverless express example set and because now we need to how we will invoke this service how the aws will invoke this microservice because this is a lambda is a function aws will go to this handler lambda dot handler and it will invoke this 
this will bootstrap your nest js server and you know it's a lambda so it's not a server based which keeps running so it has its idle time it will once the request comes it will invoke itself we are also doing some caching cache server but it will invoke uh, it will return the response and the response the lambda function dies it will still be in the cache so that when the next next request is coming it will it doesn't need to bootstrap again itself so it's like a hot lambda will not become totally cold so we need again same bootstrap time but it's lambda this is the important function which we are going to invoke and then rest all is happening through the script when you do npm run deploy what we do is we are just executing some script part here you can see this is the important part npx cdk deploy either you can run this command once you already have a zip file created in this either you created a zip file manually and then hit npx cdk deploy and your stack name stack name is the same name which you have specified in the uh, infra so here you might have specified the stack you can see this is your stack name nsjs api stack now stage can be development production based on your need okay so what i will do is i have just gone through the quick overview now it's demo part and in the demo we will take a look how we are actually deploying but in the little speedy manner because these all these things we i have already done and now uh, my objective is to cover some advanced aspects of uh, serverless architecture with the nest js as a lambda microservice okay uh, thanks everyone so the next part is the overall demo which tells you how we are configuring the aws environment and how we are deploying this nest js uh, lambda locally through cli because we have aws cli I, we have configured aws configure we have aws account and i will be just doing npx cdk deploy stack name through some script which is bundling the the whole project into this zip file and npx cdk deploy it will deploy our uh, app to the lambda and it will also create api gateway and api gate through the api gateway you can access or you can invoke the lambda function this lambda function has cloudwatch to uh, cloudwatch to check the logs so here if you see I mean you can attach lots of things to the lambda here it is very, very plain and simple log retention so it will create a cloudwatch logs for it but when you are building the actual apis you need to read and write data to, to the database so you can have a dynamo db table so you do the apis which are returned here in the source folder these controllers you will be using dynamo db services to write to the dynamo tables or to the rds tables uh, mongo db tables and all that will become your end to end microservice right so let's take a look so let's get started i will do it little quickly i'm just doing npm run build npm run start to see my application is working and this npm run deploy what this command is actually doing if you see we already have infra and in infra this is my stack name nsjs api stack and this stack contains the lambda i will add the api gateway also to this in this package json deploy is just running a script and this is my overall architecture which i wanted to do i just have a simple nest js app with the infra uh, created through the cdk stack i mean i will be creating infra on the fly based on whatever i have defined in the cdk okay so inside this uh, if you just take a look on to our code we can we can create a lambda.ts lambda.ts is nothing but a function which i have already shown this is how it looks like this is the handler function i will try to import the required dependencies required dependencies means aws serverless express aws lambda lambda all the the required dependencies and this is my aws account i will create a sandbox user and add that to the sandbox users group that already has the administrator access and you go to this user download your access key and credentials go to and log into that admin account and this is my east one and this account id is i can copy from the top right this is my account id that you need to set in the terminal export uh, aws account id equal to this is equal to development and aws account id equal to the account id which you have selected from the top right now uh, you can just uh, go to your user and i will you need to get create the access key and secret key pair i need a command line access i need to 
understand the and you download it and you configure your AWS environment AWS configure pass the access key and secret key and you need to specify the path of your lambda handler and your file path so here I have already configured AWS profile which I have skipped because that's my private credentials and I'm doing npm uh, npm run deploy which is what it is doing it is actually uh, trying to create a synthesize the CDK stack and then it will deploy it and you need to I mean you, you know, it requires a permission because it is creating resources on AWS like a lambda cloudwatch uh, logs uh, API gateway or maybe some resources so you need to allow uh, that before that happening and you can see it is creating this cloud permission chain set and you can see uh, NSDS API development stack has started deploying so it will create resource lots of events will happen you can see the lambda function has been created so we need an API gateway also with the lambda function this is API gateway proxy is true and I can just copy paste uh, because these are the, the values which you will get after the console is done these are like the some export variable names so once everything is done you will be able to get the ARN of the lambda function API gateway rest API name the URL of the rest API I will deploy this again and it is now CDK deploying the same process ideally this should happen through the CI CD process currently I'm just doing a demo on the local system and you can see this is the API gateway so this is your overall process the API gateway is attached with the proxy interface so all the requests will go and it is getting success and this is the CloudWatch logs being generated. So this is the overall things which I wanted to talk about. Here we can see uh, the code test configurations, environment variables, whatever you have populated, the permissions of the Lambda, it can do a read and write to the SNS. And this is the overall process, you, can, you got the API gateway interface and the Lambda ERN. So this is the overall demo for this whole app where I was able to deploy the uh, simple Nest.js Hello World app to the AWS environment uh, through the API Gateway and Lambda. Now this is the, you can see the first video of serverless architecture. Now what else you can, we can do on top of that? That's the important part, right? So that's what I was talking about. Now this uh, Lambda can do lots of things. It, you can use this Lambda as a cron job, it can read and write to the S3, it can actually send a message to the SNS, SQS and then there can be a further other Lambdas which are listening to this uh, stack. So you can, the overall, the whole microservice architecture can be built through Lambda. The only thing is you are writing in SDS microservices. Some Lambdas will be a listener Lambdas to the SNS, SQS or event bridge. Some Lambdas will be just uh, acting as an API interface, writing to the SNS, SQS, event bridge or reading writing data to the S3 bucket or some lambdas will be an event trigger. So in the serverless world everything is an event trigger because it's serverless, it's all event driven. Even the lambda will get invoked when the request is coming through the API gateway. So API gateway is a trigger for the lambda. Similarly like let's say S3 can be a trigger, uh, SNS can be a trigger, SQS can be a trigger for the lambda. So lambda is like an event driven function when the event happens it executes. Uh, it, Lambda can be executed through a cron job, through a API gateway, through SNS, SQS, event bridge or DynamoDB stream when there is a change. So that is the ideology of this serverless framework. Similarly, because it's not up and running, when the request comes, the Lambda will uh, respond to the request and all the asynchronous things we can do. And we can use a DynamoDB stack instead of just using RDS because for RDS we need to in the RDS instance and access it through the Lambda environment. So better we can just use an AWS managed DynamoDB that gives us lots of advantage on top of that. Okay, that's all guys. If you really like the demo, please like, share, subscribe. The next videos are everything about serverless architecture, but for backend, okay, where you are dealing with APIs and event-driven architecture systems.